All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the February 2022 virtual field trip to Rocky River Reservation. My name is Michelle Brocious. I'm your Birdwalk leader tonight. I am a Western Cuyahoga Audubon board member and field trip co-coordinator. A little bit about this program in case you've never attended before. Every month I identify a location um, in which I invite members and guests of um, Western Cuyahoga Audubon to visit. Uh, while there, um, members and guests go ahead and take photographs of what they've seen, uh, write journaling, um, keep bird lists, and submit those items to me that I then compile into uh, a scrapbook, which is really this PowerPoint presentation that I share this evening. Uh, so the point of these virtual field trips, so members and guests go out independently or with friends, not with a Audubon-led group, and then report back to me. So, there we go. Okay, a little bit about Rocky River Reservation. A Rocky River Reservation is located in Berea, Brook Park, Cleveland, Fairview Park, Lakewood, North Olmsted, Olmsted Township, and Rocky River. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first land purchased for Cleveland Metro Parks, a 3.8 acre parcel purchase in April 1919 can be seen from the Stinchcombe Goth Memorial. The character of the reservation is strongly influenced by the Rocky River. Massive shale cliffs rise above the willows, sycamores, and cottonwoods, and many trails wind through the valleys, deep floodplain forests, meadows, and wetlands. Wildlife is common in the valley, and visitors can expect to see numerous bird species and some common Ohio mammals year-round, including the white-tailed deer. Long and narrow, this reservation follows the winding course of the Rocky River from Berea almost to Lake Erie. The stream cuts deeply through the soft shales of the valley, carving a picturesque gorge. The reservation includes a nature center, marina, stables, and three golf courses. Worth noting, the Rocky River itself is a top steelhead fishing location, noted as one of the 150 best fishing spots in the country. Uh, that was taken from the Cleveland Metro Parks Rocky River Reservation webpage. And photo on the left there of the Rocky River uh, passing under the Hilliard Bridge at Rocky River Reservation um, that I took. Uh, two target species were identified for this field trip for um, people to just look for as they're out in enjoying the park. All right, so the Northern Cardinal is the first species. The male Northern Cardinal is perhaps responsible for getting more people to open up a field guide than any other bird. They're a perfect combination of familiarity, conspicuousness, and style. A shade of red you can't take your eyes off. Even the brown females sport a sharp crest and warm red accents. Cardinals don't migrate and they don't molt into a dull plumage, so they're still breathtaking in winter snowy backyards. In summer, their sweet whistles are one of the first sounds of the morning. And that's from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, Northern Cardinal webpage. And a picture I took with Northern Cardinal at the reservation on the right. Second target species, a tufted titmouse. A little gray bird with an echoing voice, the tufted titmouse is common in eastern deciduous forests and a frequent visitor to feeders. The large black eyes, small brown bill, and brushy crest gives these birds a quiet but eager expression that matches the way they flip through canopies, hang from twig ends, and drop into bird feeders. When a titmouse finds a large seed, you'll see it carry the prize to a perch and crack it with sharp wax of its stout bill. That's from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology Tufted Titmouse page and a photo I took of a Tufted Titmouse at the reservation on the right. All right, so I'm the first one up here. I saw 25 species over three visits. So I made my first visit to Rocky River Reservation in February for the WCAS Second Saturday Bird Walk on February 12th. Second Saturday is a very popular bird walk that occurs every month on the second Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. at the Rocky River Nature Center. The usual virtual, virtual field trip participants showed up, Nancy, Lisa, Al, and Sean. Uh, as you will hear from the others, trail conditions were treacherous as recent snow melt had frozen over again. Some of us had donned traction devices over our boots, but most didn't, so our leaders made the decision to trade our usual hike on the Nature Center trails for the safer paved all-purpose trail. Well, it turned out we didn't make it very far on the all-purpose trail either due to black ice. We turned back after only a few minutes and our leaders decided the walk will continue as a feeder watch at the Nature Center. However, we managed 
managed to see some good birds while we were outside. Pileated woodpecker, belted kingfisher, song sparrow, black capped chickadee, and white breasted nuthatch. The feeders offered us good looks at northern cardinal, house finch, downy woodpecker, and morning dove. And here is a picture of the whole group um, at the second Saturday bird walk at the Rocky River Reservation. All right, here are two pictures of um, a white breasted nut hatch. It is banded. I couldn't make out um, any of the markings, um, but there's the, the cool band. And I've actually seen, um, I don't know if it's the same one, but this is the third or fourth time I've photographed a banded white breasted nut hatch at the Nature Center. So um, could very well be the same bird. Uh, two photos here, Northern Cardinal and House Finch at the feeder on the left, and a Donnie Woodpecker on the right at Rocky River Reservation. Two more pictures of Downies at Rocky River Reservation. And here's a Northern Cardinal in just two slightly different poses, same bird at Rocky River Reservation. All right, Nancy Howell and I had both worn yak tracks, so we decided to walk the nature center trails together. At first, there didn't seem to be much of anything except a fox squirrel gnawing on a nut. Activity started to pick up a little once we got past the marsh. We saw one of the target species, Northern Cardinal, in a few places. There was one spot where we seemed to be surrounded by birds, black capped chickadee, tufted titmouse, the other target, white breasted nuthatch, downy, and red belly woodpecker. They seemed to come in a flurry and leave us behind in the metaphorical whirlwind they created. We continued on to the grove of spruce where we typically see a barred owl. We scanned every tree but no owl in sight. We then heard a blue jay call and then fly out of the grove to another patch of spruce. More jays started sounding their alarm. I mentioned to Nancy that they did this on a previous second Saturday walk and flushed an owl. We made our way toward the scold of jays. And actually there are a few different um, names for a group of jays. I selected scold. I thought that was most appropriate for what they were doing at this moment. So we walked towards the scold of jays and then suddenly the barred owl had enough and took off toward the grove of spruce from which we had just come. It was a beautiful sight watching that owl fly noiselessly through the woods. As a birder and a photographer, I'm sometimes faced with a choice. Do I watch or shoot? I chose to watch and was not disappointed. However, I have no photos to share with you. I was afraid that if I tried to take photos, I would miss the entire experience. Um, so I just watched it. So there's the picture of the, the fox squirrel um, with some sort of nut at the reservation. And uh, two pictures, or this is the same Northern Cardinal, um, just two slightly different poses at Rocky River Reservation. And Nancy, I just want to say that I made sure to write my piece before I read yours, and I didn't see any inconsistencies. We we basically told the same story in different ways, I think. So, but I, you know, I, I didn't write mine until like two weeks later. So if I miss, like, remember something different, then that's why. All right. So we continued on the wildlife management trail until we came to the south end where there is another marshy area. Here someone had scattered bird seed on a bench and several bird species were taking advantage of an easy meal. White-throated sparrow, dark-eyed junco, more cardinal, chickadee, and nuthatch. From there we finished the loop trail and added American robin and hairy woodpecker to the species list. We were heading back to the nature center on the West Channel Pond Loop when we spotted a pileated woodpecker. We did not add this to our eBird list as it was near the area where we spotted a pileated earlier with the second Saturday folks and it was most likely the same bird, but it was so nice to see it again. So photo on the left of white-throated sparrow at Rocky River Reservation. And then two more photos of the same bird just looking slightly away in the second photo at Rocky River Reservation. Northern Cardinal on the left and American Robin on the right at the reservation. All right, on Saturday, February 19th, I made my way back to Rocky River Reservation, once again, wearing my yak tracks. It was a chilly feels like two degrees Fahrenheit upon arrival at 9 a.m. at the Rockcliffe Springs site. 
I parked just south of the bridge at the Rockcliffe Spring Ford as my favorite trail, which is just mere minutes from my house, is the one that runs along the Rocky River from this parking lot. From here, I take that trail east and then north to the Hilliard Bridge. However, I didn't make it to the bridge as I will get to in a moment. A high counts for this excursion were 36 Canada geese and 17 mallard. For the target, I didn't see or hear any cardinal, but managed to locate one tufted titmouse. I also managed to take a ringbill gull flyover, as well as one red-bellied and downy woodpecker. It was a rough morning, beautiful but rough for finding birds. I had some bad luck about halfway to the Hilliard Bridge. There comes a point on the trail in which there's an outflow from a drainage pipe that sticks out from the cliff face. And the only way to cross this outflow is to hop strategically placed rocks that were covered in ice. I cautiously tested my yak tracks on the nearest rock and found it to be quite slippery. There was no way I was going any further. So on the left there, Canada Goose at the Rocky River Reservation. Uh, two more photos, Downy Woodpecker on the left, and then on the right is the view from the drainage outflow. So right here is the, the river, and here's the, the, the Hilliard Bridge way over here. So the river is over here and kind of turns, and then right here is the outflow and the pipe is over on this side, maybe another 20 feet away. Um, so just to give you a little idea of where I was stopped. All right, although I was prevented from continuing onward, I was lucky enough that three American robins had chosen to forge the area in their fluffed up winter coats. They stuck around for some photo ops before going on with their day. I hiked out of there and didn't see anything new. I was so disappointed with the yield that when I returned to the parking lot, I crossed the road instead of getting into my car and tried the loop around Memorial Field. Absolutely no birds there. I then crossed the bridge on Valley Parkway heading north and did hear some sweet chirping in the shrubs below. House sparrows to the rescue. Yeah, I never thought I would say that. Um, the temperature had dropped to feels like negative one degrees Fahrenheit by the time I got out of there at 11.15 a.m., just 10 species for the day. So a picture of American Robin um, at the Rocky River Reservation on the right. And then two more pictures of, I think that's probably the same Robin. Two more Robin pictures. These were different individuals. Another Robin pick and then House Sparrow picture on the right at Rocky River Reservation. All right, I made my final visit to Rocky River Reservation on Sunday, February 27th. The temps were much warmer than my previous visit at a feels like 25 degrees Fahrenheit upon arrival at 10 a.m. I once again visited my favorite trail at Rockcliffe Spring, hoping the ice would have melted enough over the last eight days to let me pass the outflow. On my drive to the parking lot, I spotted a turkey vulture. It counts because I saw in the reservation a new species for my virtual field trip list. There were not as many Canada geese and mallard this time around, but they were still present. As I walked the trail toward Hillier Bridge, I was encouraged by the cry of a Belta Kingfisher. Never sighted it though. So photo of a female mallard at Rocky River Reservation on the left. And then um, more, more mallards. Male and female on the left and a male on the right at Rocky River Reservation. I was able to cross the outflow this time as the rocks were thawed and dry. Yay. I was delighted by a flurry of activity just on the other side. A tufted titmouse perched momentarily on a tree callus and gave me an inquisitive look. There were also two Carolina wrens hiding in a shrub that refused to pop out to allow me a good look. I managed to focus my lens on one of them as it hid. A black-capped chickadee came down to almost eye level and alighted on a branch. The number of D notes of a chickadee's chickadee D call indicates the perceived severity of the threat. This chickadee didn't seem very threatened by my presence and hung out with me for several moments. A moment is a long time for a chickadee. Uh, there were also Northern Cardinal, White-Throated Sparrow, and Dark-Eyed Junko flitting around. I, I hung out with these birds for several minutes before continuing to the Hilliard Bridge. I was hopeful for a peregrine falcon sighting as a peregrine pair is known to nest on this bridge. So Tufted Titmouse um, on the right-hand side there, looking right at me um, at Rocky River Reservation. 
And then here on the left is the Carolina Wren. I was so stoked that I got this in focus. Um, there was a lot <laughs> between me and that bird. Uh, so I was happy that its eye is in focus. And then a black capped chickadee on the right at Rocky River Reservation. All right, I made it as close as I dared to the bridge. The trail gets steep here and conditions were still a little slippery, but I was close enough. I paused for a few minutes and scanned the bridge and treetops with my binoculars, nothing. I had turned around and had taken a couple of steps when I happened to look up and saw a peregrine falcon circle high above the trees overhead and then disappear. I was thrilled to have seen it and waited to see if it would return. It did. It flew back into view and perched in a tree directly across the river from where I was standing. I took hundreds of photos of this bird over the next several minutes before I walked away with a huge smile on my face. My favorite trail had redeemed itself from my previous visit. A picture of Peregrine Falcon um, at Rocky River Reservation on the left hand side. And then two more pictures. Um, I did this thing where it like, fluffed out all its feathers and it did a little grooming. It was really fun to watch. And then here's my bird list. Um, I always highlight in red notable species, notable to me, your list may look different. Uh, Belted kingfisher, barred owl, pileated woodpecker, peregrine falcon, and then of course the tufted titmouse and the northern cardinal were the target species. And I have a white-breasted nut hatch at the reservation on the left-hand side. Sean Mizig is the next one up. He had 18 species over four visits, um, overachiever in February. Uh, so he says February was a challenging month. The weather was all over the place with heavy snows and ice storms too. Throw in some thawing and rain as well and conditions have been interesting to say the least. I've also noticed this affecting the wildlife too. Birds have come and gone from my yard on a daily basis and the numbers have changed drastically throughout the month. On February 5th, I made my first trip out to the Rocky River Reservation and I stopped on one of my favorite trails that is off the main path. This trail follows the Rocky River from behind the Maple Grove picnic area close to Cedar Point Ford and comes out across the street from the lagoon. There were quite there was quite a bit of snow on the trail that day along with ice on the river. I did not find any signs of life on the trail until I reached its end and found three redheads and three hooded mergansers in one of the open parts of the river. They didn't seem to be bothered by one another and they all seemed to mind their own business. I continued my way along the river and got closer to the small dam. I did not find anything there either, but decided to capture the snowy landscape while I was there. Making my way across the parkway, I stopped at the bench that is by a smaller lagoon wetland area and finally got a winter shot there. Before this, I was only able to get a shot in fall that I liked. So on the right-hand side, female of a hooded merganser at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. And hooded mergansers. On the left and redheads on the right at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. And here are some photos of uh, winter river scenery on the left and a winter bench scenery on the right at Rocky River Reservation by Sean. You know, the it, it may have been like really cold and even on some of these trips, very few birds, but there certainly was a brilliant blue sky in February. I noticed in Sean's pictures and in my pictures, we had some blue skies. All right. There was also a white breasted nut hatch and a red bellied woodpecker that were in the area and they made their presence known. I then walked through a nearby parking lot and circled around to the lagoon. It was a nice walk, but there really wasn't much out. I did see a few cardinals, titmice, and chickadees as I got closer to the lagoon. So white breasted nut hatch at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig on the left hand side. February 12th was the second Saturday walk at the Rocky River Nature Center and I was ready to get two birds, hopefully more with one stone. I enjoy the second Saturday walks each month and this month would be great as I could count it towards the virtual field trip. However, the weather had different plans. Temperatures went up and the snow had thawed during the week, only to freeze again and more snow afterwards. This caused all of the trails to have a solid covering of ice and 
conditions were not safe enough to walk as we normally did. We did happen to see a pileated woodpecker and I got a shot of a red squirrel so the day wasn't a complete loss. So here is uh, the red squirrel at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missick. And then I have the pileated woodpecker on the left and he also um, got a picture of the belted kingfisher that we saw on the second Saturday walk on the right. So on February 19th, I made a return trip to the Rocky River Nature Center to make up for the unfortunate circumstances of the week prior. The trails still weren't 100%, but they were much better than the prior week and I was able to walk the usual path around the area. During my walk, the usual birds were all flying around and making calls. Some were also perched and puffed up to keep warm. I did happen to find one barred owl in a tree on one of the trails off of the main path. This owl found the perfect spot to sit close by the trunk of a tree with plenty of cover around it. The wind was also blowing pretty strong that day, so getting a shot was really difficult. I must have taken at least 30 shots, and out of those, only two were actually usable. Been there, been there, Sean. I totally empathize. All right, all the other, all the others had branches in the owl's face or too much haze from out of focus branches in the frame. I'm glad I stuck with it though. When I made it to the other side of the park, I walked a short path to try and find another owl in the pines. There, it was no owl there, but I did have a nice encounter with a doe on the on that trail. I was looking up most of the time to hopefully locate an owl and that doe was looking down as it was grazing through the snow for potential food. Then it seemed that we noticed each other at the same time. We both looked at each other and carried on as if nothing had happened. I did get a few shots of the deer before it made its way off of the path. It's moments like these that make photography and walking in nature even more rewarding. So here's the picture of the barred owl um, on the left-hand side there at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. And that is a pretty good shot. You got right through those branches. So good job. And here's the doe at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. American Robins at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. Couple more robins and um the picture on the right is amazing with the snow being kicked up behind it as it takes flight. I really like that image. All right, the remainder of my walk was filled with all of the chickadees, titmice, not hatches, cardinals, and woodpeckers that are always out. It wasn't until I got back toward the nature center that things changed a little bit. I noticed a few goldfinch in the area and they were rather energetic considering the conditions. After getting some pictures of them, they left the area and I found a small flock of Eastern bluebirds flying through the area. So a picture of American goldfinch at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. And then here are two um, pictures of Eastern bluebird at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. All right, February 26th, I made another trip to the Rocky River Nature Center. I didn't want to repeat a location so often, but I was not having luck on any of the trails. So I decided to stick with somewhere that I knew birds would be. Solid plan. <laughs> um, Weather was sort of an issue again for this trip. Sections of the path were covered in ice, but not as bad as on the 12th. Other sections were completely submerged due to the rains we had during the week. I did manage to make my way along the normal route safely and enjoy a nice walk. Unfortunately, no owls on this trip, but the woodpeckers were out in force. I found a hairy woodpecker that seemed to be okay with having its picture taken as I was looking for owls. The usual birds were around again, and I encountered a Carolina wren that wanted nothing to do with having its picture taken. In the back area of the trail, I did find some house finch flying around and a few northern cardinal as well. So that's a gorgeous picture of a hairy woodpecker um, at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. And Downy Woodpecker at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. House finch at Rocky River Reservation.
As I rounded the corner to make my way back, I found my lucky shot. The small trees and brush back there were still covered in ice from the freezing rain we had from the freezing rain we had a few days prior. Off in the distance was a lonely little male northern cardinal within the icy brush. I watched him for a while and had my camera ready the entire time, and then it happened. He reached up for some berries above him and were somehow that were somehow not frozen. After eating a few of these, he went back to being fluffy again. It was also nice having the sun out to help illuminate all of the ice that was there. The last stop I made was on the short bridge that goes over the water near the nature center. I could hear what sounded like a stick or nut being chewed on and I immediately started looking for a squirrel. I checked all the branches both near and far and still couldn't find one. The noise continued and I still couldn't find the culprit. Then I noticed something in the ice. It looked like a large stump or log, but I looked through my camera and it was a beaver. It had found something in the water that it was chewing on and that's where the noise was coming from. Mystery solved and quite a unique quite a unique find for that day. Uh, the Rocky River Reservation is a wonderful section of the Cleveland Metro Parks and I have spent a lot of time there throughout my life. Unfortunately, weather played a big factor in my adventures for this month, but the animals will be back and so will I. So for a uh, photo of the Northern Cardinal um, at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig with all that beautiful ice on the trees. And then here's the beaver at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. Bird list. Notables include a red, the redhead, hooded merganser, belted kingfisher, barred owl, uh, tufted titmouse was uh, one of the targets, pileated woodpecker, and the other target, northern cardinal. And picture of a red-bellied woodpecker at Rocky River Reservation by Sean Missig. All right, next up is Al Rand. He had 24 species over three visits. Uh, and this is what he says. Uh, the first stop was on February 5th. It was a brutally cold day and less than 24 hours after the heavy snows that fell at the beginning of the month. Because of that, I did some feeder watching from the comforts of the nature center. The feeders were very active that afternoon and thankfully it was a sunny afternoon. I totaled 20 species in 80 minutes. Common red poles were reported at that feeder a few days prior, so I was hopeful at least one would show up. The weather conditions from the previous day were favorable for a post-storm feeding frenzy, but the red poles must have found somewhere else to eat. The highlights were a brown creeper and a red-breasted nuthatch. There happened to be a creature feature presentation while I was there, so now I am further educated about turtles and all the pets the local children have. <laughs> After leaving the nature center, I made my way to the Lewis Road riding ring. Sadly, I did not see a single bird while I was there. All right, picture of white-throated sparrow at Rocky River Reservation by Al Ran. Um, you know, I've I've done the Lewis Road riding ring twice for the Christmas bird count, but only got there like late afternoon both times. So I always thought that was why. There were so few birds, but even still, I had seen the target species there, a tufted, tit, my, tufted tit mouse and um, northern cardinal in, in the, the woods on the trail, I think to the west. Um, and I think Lisa, you, you sent me an email at the beginning reporting that the conditions at the Lewis Road Riding Ring were, maybe it's all the snow, it was just kind of hard to pick through there. So maybe that wasn't the best location to highlight. Um, for me to suggest, but you know, we, we learn through this virtual field trip. So I'll definitely check it out again in warmer weather, see if it's any better. All right, uh, he says the second visit was for the second Saturday bird walk on February 12th. As stated at the member meetup, the conditions that day were less than ideal as well. The paths and trails were very icy. So after trying our luck in a few places with minimal success, we retired back to the nature center for more feeder watching. The highlight of the, that trip was a pile of woodpecker busy at work wrecking a tree looking for food. Also saw the red breasted knot hatch again. We eked out 17 species that day. My final visit was on February 19th, and as to not deviate from the theme, I watched the Nature Center feeders again. All the usual suspects were there, including two hairy woodpeckers on the same tree at the same time. It was quite the study because there were also four downy woodpeckers on the tree as well. Can't say that I've ever seen six woodpeckers on one tree at one time. After seeing the red breasted not hatch yet again, I think it's safe to say it has set up camp near the feeders. So a picture of Northern Cardinal at Rocky River Reservation by Al Rand. 
And then he also grabbed a picture of the Carolina Wren on the left and talked to Titmouse on the right at Rocky River Reservation. Uh, here's his bird list. Notable species include Belted Kingfisher, Red-Tailed Hawk, Pileated Woodpecker, Tufted Titmouse, Red-Breasted Nuthatch, Brown Creeper, American Tree Sparrow, Northern Cardinal. I love American Tree Sparrow. I think they're one of my favorite sparrows, so that's why I highlighted that one. All right, White-Breasted Nuthatch um, at Rocky River Reservation by myself um, on the left-hand side. Again, it's another picture of that banded, the banded White-Breasted Nuthatch in its Typical classic pose, facing downwards, kind of tilting its head up. All right, Nancy, I know that you like to take yours. If you would wish, you can take it away. All righty. Well, thanks, thanks, Michelle, and thanks to everybody who's who's watching and listening. Um, yeah, I tended to hit the southern area of the Rocky River Reservation. I consider where the Nature Center is kind of a, the central. And then you have the northern area that Michelle tends to like to, you know, go where, where the Hilliard Road Bridge is and stuff like that. But I hit uh, twice, I hit the uh, area from the Sledding Hill, which is near um, Bagley Road and then walked all the way to uh, the Lagoon picnic area and back. So I did that uh, twice of the, my three visits. And each of those times I did a bird checklist, one for Willow Bend picnic area and one for the Lagoon picnic area. So that each of those, those two visits had two eBird checklists. Uh, my third visit was on the second Saturday and again, it was pretty icy, but as Michelle mentioned that we walked uh, the trails behind the nature center and the, the wildlife loop trail um, together, seeing the barred owl and so forth. Um, I just have a little camera on my phone so I don't get all the lovely bird photos. I like that one of the tufted titmouse that, that Al had with his mouth open. <laughs> they really are loud, so I could see him just belting it out. Um, and well, I'll tell you, everybody I think put in their discussions um, the, the, the way the weather was. And yes, February was pretty weird. So uh, a lot of snow, a lot of ice, and I wish I could have visited more times. Um, but I did go out on Saturday, February 5th. And the day was really, really sunny and bright. It was beautiful. So, and but very cold. Uh, as you could see in my writing, the thermometer at home read five and a half degrees Fahrenheit, the thermometer in the car read 10 degrees, so eh, it was brisk. Um, but a light layer of, of snow had fallen, maybe like two inches, and everything was just coated in, in beautiful snow. The branches, I mean, even, even the shag bark hickory, every single shaggy bark on the hickory had a layer of snow on it. It was beautiful. And um, so, as I mentioned, I started at the Berea Falls Overlook and walked to the Lagoon Picnic Area. Um, what was really nice the very first time I walked there is they had the uh, road closed. They had Valley Parkway closed. They had the gates closed right at the Sledding Hill area, all the way down to Spafford Road, which kind of was nice because I was able to walk on the road ha <laughs> ha and there were a lot of runners out that morning too but it was it was wonderful um so I I did look at the falls and of course the the river was flowing super fast no ice on the river there and a lot of icicles were uh from the water seeping through the rocks there it was really 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 pretty so and what I I was really lucky that and I had never seen turkeys in that area, but I took a photo of some turkey footprints um, in the snow, and I should have put something next to them to show the size. Um, they're certainly, uh, like if I put my binoculars next to them, you would get a better idea as the size of those footprints. But um, so that was on my second time walking the uh, trail from, again, the uh, falls down to the lagoon 
You know, Nancy, it does look like there's a, a shoe print here. And again, we don't know yeah. what size feet. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, an ad. I, I know. Yeah, I don't know whose that is. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's a turkey with a boot on or something. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, you know, it's it's maybe, you know, an adult, you know, footprint. So yeah, you yeah. can kind of see it's it's pretty big. Right. Yeah. And and if just for a little bit of information, um, I knew they were turkey prints because it was in the forest, but you know, turkey and great blue heron foot feet are pretty similar. The great blue heron would have longer toes and a longer hind toe. I don't know, if maybe Michelle, if you can uh, hover your, your cursor over the little dot behind each of those. Yeah, there it is. That's the hind toe of the turkey. So it's very mm -hmm. short. It's up a little higher. So that's just the claw on the hind toe um, and then the other three toes. But a great blue heron would have a nice long hind toe. So just for your information. <laughs> Next slide, please. And of course, with, with that beautiful sunshine shining on the trees, um, I know there were some days where there were was ice on the trees and it was beautiful. Or, I mean, I don't know why sycamores have developed and, and evolved with this beautiful, beautiful white bark. But it, I mean, there were days when it was like, wow, look at that sycamore. It's just glowing. Um, I just couldn't get enough of the scenery. And half the time I, I thought, well, gee, am I in northern Michigan? Am I in Wisconsin? Uh, and then I had to pinch myself sometimes because it was just so beautiful. Um, I, but the birding was actually better than I anticipated, you know, with all the snow and the cold. And starting off close to the Sledding Hill and, and uh, Berea Falls, I got a lot of the usual woodland birds, the nuthatch and uh, downy and red-bellied woodpeckers, blue jays, uh, chickadee, and then yellow rump warblers. Who knew? Uh, it was a nice surprise. And one of the things they were feeding on was poison ivy fruits. There were a lot of poison ivy berries all kind of shriveled up but they, that's what they were feeding on. So um, don't dismiss the poison ivy as a bad plant. Granted, you probably don't want it in your yard if, if, you, if people are super allergic, but it's really, really good for, for hungry birds. Next, please. Oh, thanks for the beautiful <laughs> nut hatch. Um, so after seeing the, the, that little flurry of birds, then a red-tailed hawk flew over. And as I was mentioning, I walked the road. So just a lot of woodpeckers and nuthatch and just, I mean, hairy, pileated flicker, um, just a lot of woodpeckers were very, very active that day. And I, I don't know if it was just because it was like one of the first sunny days after the heavy snowfall and they were all looking for mates or whatever, I don't know. But as you can see from the list, a lot of the woodland species and uh, when, I, when I reached the lagoon picnic area, I saw a lot of the same things, but um, that was uh, belted kingfisher, yay, uh, and a couple of places along the river that was ice free, and some Canada geese, uh, ring billed gulls, Carolina wren, and I did have a couple of bluebirds at Willow Bend picnic area, um, goldfinch, robin. So I just, again, kept adding things along as I was. Uh, as I was walking. Next, please. Uh, the second visit was the second Saturday on February 12th and uh, the super icy and dangerous walking. So again, as Michelle had mentioned earlier, we, and I'm glad our stories <laughs> were consistent, um, but yeah, it was, it was really nice. It had been a while since I had walk the trails behind the nature center and that wildlife loop trail. Um, boy, the trees have gotten big, but it, it was really fun. Um, the seed that people had tossed along the way really attracted a lot of the, the birds. So again, lots of woodpeckers and chickadees, titmouse, nuthatch, cardinal. Um, the robins, I always like robins in the winter anyhow, it doesn't matter. Uh, how many times I see them. I love winter robins. I don't know why. The uh, feed that people had tossed on the ground also attracted the junco, dark-eyed junco, white-throated sparrow, and song sparrow too. 
It was a beautiful cardinal by Michelle. And of course, uh, we, as Michelle had mentioned, the Blue Jays were getting, uh, well, oh, what did you call that group of Blue Jays? Uh, a, a what? Scold. Oh, scold. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the Blue Jays began calling a lot. And so it kind of alerted us that, yep, there was something that they were after. And yep, a barred owl came out of the one a, a bunch of spruce that are by the wildlife uh, area and then flew to another stand of spruces, just like, oh, get away from these jays. And I did add the red-breasted nuthatch. Um, we were in the nature center, of course, watching the feeders. I did not include all those on my list, but uh, but I did put in the red-breasted nuthatch because that was a that was a nice one for me for the day. And February 27th, uh, later in the month, uh, third visit, again, two checklists, Willow Bend and Lagoon. And I just couldn't, again, keep from taking a photo of this, this uh, hornet nest with its little frosting of snow on it. Uh, just really, really beautiful. Um, I did have my ice cleats on because again, as everybody else had mentioned, freezing, thawing, and even later in the, in the month, um, in the shade of the forest trees, uh, a lot of the all-purpose trail was still covered with some, uh, some icy spots. So I, I really did want to be careful. As you can see from the list, a lot of the same um, forest birds, the chickadees, titmouse, different woodpeckers, cardinal. Uh, I did add a northern flicker, uh, my, my final walk, and I did have American Robin and Yellow Rump Warbler. That was really nice. Again, by the poison ivy berries. Uh, Red Winged Blackbird, yay, that added that. It was um, at, a, at a distance, but I did see it when I was coming back to my car. So uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, Carolina Wren, heard several of those, and House Finch and American Goldfinch. Now they were at the tops of the sycamore, so I think they were probably feeding on some of the sycamore uh, seeds in those little the little balls that were hanging from the trees. Next, please. And the river was open and running fast. Uh, no ice on the river at all that day. And I was really hoping for more birds on the river. Uh, Canada geese were the only birds. I was really pleased to, to hear that was, I think it was uh, Sean that had the redheads and, and hooded mergs, but no, I wasn't so lucky. I don't know if I even got a, a mallard to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, but I did get morning dove and bluebird and a kingfisher, yay. And, uh, and a pileated woodpecker with the lagoon. And is the next one, there's my bird list. So I did have a red-tailed hawk, which was nice. The, the kingfisher, the barred owl, which was awesome. Uh, the woodpecker, pileated woodpecker, tif tufted titmouse, one of our target species. The red-breasted nuthatch, woohoo. Um, the red-winged blackbird, the yellow rump warbler, and of course our other target species, the northern cardinal. Great fun. Thank you, Nancy. And I, mm -hmm. I highlighted the red-winged blackbird because I'm so excited they're returning. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe by summer, I'll be like, ah, it's just another blackbird. <laughs> but it yeah, is actually I, my I, spark bird as well. That's, that uh, was my, my reason for getting into birding. So I'll always have, there'll always be a special place in my heart for the red-winged blackbird. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. That was great. Mm -hmm. All right, a final um, entry here, Lisa Gerbig. I saw 25 species over three trips. And she says, in February, I visited the Rocky River Reservation three times on, well, you know, she was, Lisa, you were also at um, the uh, Rocky River Nature Center for the second Saturday, but maybe it just, there, there wasn't a lot that was seen, so you didn't include that, but you actually saw me went four times, so I should really give you credit for four trips. Um, anyways, in February, I visited the Rocky River Reservation three times. On February 20th, I walked the trail at the Lagoon Picnic area. There were woodpeckers, nuthatches, chickadees, goldfinches, and cardinals. I observed a white-breasted nuthatch 
pull what I believe was a caterpillar from a hole in a tree branch. Lively red squirrels were chasing each other around the trees. The new boardwalk through the lagoon was fantastic. I can't wait to go back soon when the wood ducks and herons return. And there's that amazing picture of the white breasted nut hatch pulling that caterpillar um, right out of that hole um, at Rocky River Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. And then here's another picture of that white breasted nut hatch with the caterpillar firmly in its beak on the left and cute red squirrels on the right, you know, just facing each other um, at Rocky River Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. And red squirrels are my favorite of the squirrels. They're just so small and cute. All right, next on February 21st, I strolled the trails of Rocky River Nature Center with my daughter and a friend. It was a warm sunny day and we were lucky to find a variety of birds. Two Carolina wrens were on the hillside just past the nature center. I managed to snap a picture of one singing. Um, after that, we watched two brown creepers working their way around the trees. Next, we spotted several Eastern bluebirds and my first of the year red winged blackbirds. Yay. Um, my friend was thrilled to see the barred owl I pointed out hiding up in a pine tree. The highlight of the trip for me was observing the pileated woodpeckers. There were four in one small area. My daughter wanted to take a video of them. We figured she would be the best at holding the camera steady. The video is a bit shaky, but it was the best we could get. The woodpeckers were going up and down and around the tree. At first, I thought it was a male and female, but then I looked closer. It was two males on the same tree. We watched them for about 10 minutes and they didn't seem to care about us. That was a great way to end the trip. So photo on the left-hand side of the Carolina Wren singing at Rocky River Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. A beautiful photo. You were super lucky it just came out in the open like that. I, they, they, they tend to hide from me. Um, and a photo of a brown creeper on the left and Eastern bluebird on the right at Rocky River Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. And here are the pileated woodpeckers at Rocky River Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. Now here's the video and I'm going to play it. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it, um, but at least you'll see them. So that was really cool. Did you all see that? Okay, fantastic. So thank you for that, Lisa. That was that was really cool to have that video. All right, my final trip was on February 26th. As I hiked along, I hoped to see the pileated woodpeckers again, but I only heard one. The Northern Cardinals sing their songs and American robins search through leaves for something to eat. I saw quite a few woodpeckers, black capped chickadees, and tufted chip mice on this trip. In the back, between the two wetland areas, I found several white throated sparrows in the bushes, in the trees, and on the ground. I was not able to find the owl this time, but I did enjoy seeing many other species. So, beautiful uh, picture of black capped chickadee at Rocky River Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. Northern Cardinals. A uh, female on the left and male on the right at Rocky River Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. And here are a couple of white throated sparrows at the reservation by Lisa Gerbic. And then here is Lisa's bird list, 25 species. Notables include barred owl, sharp shin hawk, a red-tailed hawk, pileated woodpecker, tufted titmouse, brown creeper, um, red-winged blackbird, and northern cardinal. And a, pilot, a photo of one of the two pileated woodpeckers at Rocky River Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. 
All right, so that's it. A uh, huge thank you uh, to Sean Missig, Al Rand, Nancy Howell, and Lisa Gerbic, and of course the Cleveland Metro Parks for the Rocky River Reservation. Um, the sites that I had suggested, uh, the Rocky River Nature Center trails, always a fantastic place to find birds. Lewis Road Riding Rink, maybe um, in the spring or summer, uh, might yield a little a little more. Lagoon Picnic Area, um, a great place also to find birds. Any picnic area on Valley Parkway, check it out. Um, and then the all-purpose trail along the Valley Parkway is paved and offers a lovely walk for those with accessibility needs. And please visit wcautobahn.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. And then I have included a photo on the left there of the Tuft of Tip Mouse um, that was just about to leave me at Rocky River Reservation. And so with that, I would like to open up for discussion. If anyone has any further comments or questions, um, please take yourself off mute or put in the chat. Yeah, I have a question. Um, is that a boardwalk at Lagoon open? Um, I didn't walk it because I thought it was not quite finished, but I didn't go that close. Um, I think most of it is open. I saw they're still working on one part, but it was enough. There was enough there for me to make a loop. So, okay. Oh, good. Hmm. Yeah, I, I saw that they were working on it. Um, well, they started it. What? When did we have our evening walk uh, last fall? And it, they had done quite a bit, and it looks good. Um, I think it'll really save on the erosion that was along the area. And I think, are there little uh, places where people can now fish too? Little, yeah. little, little, uh, like bump outs. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of fishing, one thing I didn't mention is when I was at the lagoon on the second trip, you know, later in March or a little later in February, um, there were guys fishing at the river there at the, below that little spill where that little dam. And they somebody pulled out a really nice steelhead. I mean, it must oh, nice. have been it must have been 18 inches long. Well, you know, I can do a fish story. It, it was, you know, it was three feet long, not really. <laughs> but uh, but it was really beautiful. And you put it in the snow and it was flopping around. I guess it was gonna eat it, but I, I looked at it, it was like really I should have taken a picture of it, duh. But <laughs> it was it was really it was really pretty. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw um people fishing on my um, walks as well, because the trail that I take is along the river and you know, all the way there's, there's people yeah. um, out in the water fishing. I didn't realize it was so popular for fishing. And then right there in the description on the Cleveland Metro Parks website, it says it's like in, in the top 150 places in the country or something. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was that's what kind of made me yeah. think about it when, uh, when, I, when I didn't add it to my, uh, discussion or description I'm like oh man I didn't realize it was so um in, you know in, high up there in the list of places in the U.S. Well I Lisa I, I enjoyed your your chickadee photo kind of towards the end it was so cute so close mm -hmm. so fuzzy I just wanted to touch it <laughs> I think they, they were super cute Go ahead. They're probably begging for food. <laughs> I didn't have any with me, but they thought I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those chickens. I'm are jealous super of. Cute. I'm I'm jealous of the uh, red squirrel picture because red squirrels, uh, Michelle, I agree with you. They are the absolute cutest. Yeah. And the two of them on the tree looking at each other like that—that's oh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the video that was added too. That was really nice. I didn't hear anything on the video, but oh, but uh, okay. I, and yeah, you know, it was a little wiggly, but hey, it was it was fine. <laughs> My daughter took it. No, she, it was she, good. She told me I I can hold the camera still better than you can. So <laughs> oh. I don't know about that. <laughs> How old's your daughter? It was hard with the big lens on though. Oh, uh, yeah. 20, 22. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's hard to sometimes hold the camera steady. Yeah, because you, you do have a big lens. I have a micro four thirds camera. Um, and I, and I, I 
bought a micro four thirds intentionally because I wanted something more compact because I, I like to hike and scramble and I didn't want to have to get weighed down. <laughs> but then I, I traded some of it because the most I can get is um, I have a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So you can get more of a reach with what you have for sure. Um, I, I can only get those closer birds. So um, our uh, field trip, virtual field trip this month is at uh, Big Creek Reservation. I did go out this past weekend um, to the Lake Isaac Waterfowl Sanctuary and hike the trail that goes around behind. Um, and just a heads up, there is a red-shouldered hawk's nest there. Um, so if you make it there, um, look for that. It's If you take the loop counterclockwise, you'll pass like a marshy area on your right hand side and then you'll come to a part in the trail where there's a bench and then a hard left of the trail. It's like if you're standing at that bench, look west into the woods and that's where the nest is. Um, and I got some pretty good pictures of a red shouldered hawk um, when it, I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's far back and if they stay by the nest, there's lots of branches in the way, but they, they fly to, and they were flying to and from it and one came out into the open for me. So I was really happy about that. Not to give too much away, I'll save more of that for, for my write up, but just a, a tip, there's a ritual and hawkness there. Um, and it was just a beautiful, a beautiful day on Saturday, so. Yeah, I've been out a couple times in different places in the, in the uh, Big Creek. Um, and speaking of red-shouldered hawk nests, there's a nest uh, very close to Brook Park Road where, where Big Creek Parkway comes into Brook Park. I think the, oh. the red shoulders are shopping over at uh, Sam's Club and Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I also went out on Saturday. Uh, I actually went to Byers Pond first in the morning, then went to the trail at Lake Isaac uh, right around lunchtime, and then finished the day at the second part of the Lake to Lake Trail. I saw a total of seven different hawks wow. and got pictures of most of them. And I actually found a red shouldered hawk nest uh behind buyer's pond okay and that one's a lot easier to uh get to uh it was very tough to photograph and what i got was mostly tree and a sliver of the nest and a sliver of the bird uh but it is back there so i'm probably gonna make a couple trips back there to check it out and see if there's any activity but yeah Excellent. saturday was a great great day for a lot of a lot of birds especially the hawks that's exciting. I should have made Hawks the target for this month. Yeah, who what is knew? the target for? Oh, waterfowl. That's what it is. I'm like, what yeah. am I even looking for? <laughs> I didn't see any waterfowl when I went to Lake Isaac. That's supposed to be the waterfowl sanctuary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well. You, right now, you've got to look. Um, they're not in the big part of the lake. If you look in that small little, um, Feeder Creek towards the end. Um, that's I've seen two geese there, and if, okay. if I remember right, there are two geese that like to nest there, and they'll probably be starting their territory wars there pretty soon. Okay, thanks for the tip. Yeah, another place to look at Lake Isaac is the southern end where the beaver have created a little wetland area. Um, wood duck and mallard are in there regularly. And there were three pied-billed grebes on the lake. Uh, yesterday, was it yesterday? I, I think it was yesterday. Okay. I'll definitely have to go back there. Um, but I also wanted to make it to some other sites. So we'll see. All right, Any, anything else before we wrap up the call? All right, well, thank you very much for joining me this evening and I hope to see you next month. Have Thanks a good everybody. Evening.